This is the unit about the uh, animal kingdom, and this is the first set of notes where we'll talk about some of the basic characteristics of animals and how they begin. Now, animals begin with a zygote. Remember, the zygote is the union of the egg and sperm um, that uh, the sperm fertilize the egg, and that produces a diploid cell from two haploid cells. Once um, fertilization occurs, then within a few hours, uh, the, the cleavage begins, the splitting of one cell into two by mitosis, and cleavage will continue to occur from two cells to four cells to, to eight cells to 16 and so forth. The morula is, the, is a solid ball of 16 cells, and as the cells continue to increase in number, what begins to happen is that the cells on the inside <clears throat> begin to lose a way to come in contact with nutrients and a way to get rid of their waste. And so they begin to migrate toward the outside and this, this begins to form a hollow ball of cells that we call a blastula. The blastula is a hollow ball, single layer of cells. Inside there is a fluid and outside there is fluid so that all the cells can um, equally exchange uh, nutrients and waste with the outside environment. Eventually, uh, once, as the blastula gets a little bit bigger, the um, part of the vascula starts to push in on one side, forming a double-layered uh, gastrula that has an opening called a blastopore. Here's kind of what it looks like. We'll start with the zygote here, which is our diploid cell resulting from fertilization. Um, here's the eight cell stage after it divides some and when it gets to the point where there are enough cells to make this hollow ball we can look at a cross section here and see what it looks like the blastocele is the opening in the inside or the cavity on the inside the, cell conti the cells continue to grow and divide and eventually uh, part of the gastrula start, uh, part of the blastula starts to push in. This process is called gastrulation, and it eventually forms an embryo that has two cell layers. We call the outer cell layer the ectoderm, and the inner cell layer the endoderm. As time uh, goes on, the um, embryo develops more and more, and you end up with three layers of cells: the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. And then we began we began seeing some of the um, parts, other parts of the of the uh, embryo starting to develop. Once uh, there are three layers of cells, these are called the germ layers. These are undifferentiated cells that can take on different functions as the development of the embryo continues or progresses. The three layers are the ectoderm, the outermost layer shown here in the diagrams in red. This will eventually become in the adult organism, the adult animal, the sense organs and nerves, nervous system and the skin. The endoderm, the innermost part, the is shown in yellow in the pictures, uh, will become the digestive and respiratory tracts, the, both the lining and the coverings of those. And then the third layer, the middle layer, the mesoderm, uh, will become the muscles and much of the rest of the organ systems of the animal. Once the animal embryo has three layers of cells, there are three different ways that the, the cell can, that the uh, embryo continue to develop. Uh, some of them develop into animals that are acelomates. Acelomates means they don't have a body cavity. Uh, this is uh, only found in ph ph phylum platyhelminthes, the flatworms. Uh, we do see, start to see the beginning of the development of organ systems. They have a primitive nervous system, a primitive circulatory system. They have some structures that can be used to um, get rid of nitrogen waste, sort of like your kidneys do, but they don't really have a lot of systems and there definitely is no body cavity for the organs to reside in. The second um, most more developed type of animal is pseudocelomate. A pseudocelomate has a developing body cavity that isn't formed from the mesoderm. If you'll notice in the diagram here, there's uh, the mesoderm layer and then there's a fluid filled cavity surrounding the endoderm. Uh, that fluid filled cavity, the pseudocelum, is, in, is responsible for transporting nutrients and oxygen throughout. This uh, body plan is found only in phylum nematoda, the roundworms. They do have a complete digestive system with a mouth and an anus, and they have uh, a few more organs. Their most developed organ is their digestive system, but not a whole lot else. The third uh, level 
of development is called a coelomate or having a true coelom. This is the case for uh, segmented worms like annelids and for mollusks, um, for arthropods, for um, echinoderms, uh, starfish like animals, and for chordates which includes humans. The coelom is the true body cavity and the reason that it's a true body cavity is it's a cavity formed between layers of the mesoderm. It's formed within the mesoderm during the embryonic development. It's lined with a tissue called peritoneum which is a thin layer of cells from the mesoderm that forms the lining of the body wall and the outside lining of the intestine. This is first found in, as we move up the developmental scale in phylum annelida, the segmented worms, and all other phyla after that have the same type of body plan. Now there are certain characteristics that all animals have in common. First of all, all animals, animals are multicellular. This allows them to have specialized cells that can do specialized jobs, can divide the labor that needs to be done by the animal uh, into different parts like your muscles, and the nerves, and sense organs, the digestive system, and so forth. All animals are also heterotrophs. They don't produce their own food and actually most animals actually ingest their food or eat it uh, or bring it into their body rather than absorb it like the fungi did. They're also eukaryotic, meaning that they're complex organisms with, with complex cells, numerous um, organelles within their cells that do specialized jobs inside the cells. The animal kingdom is the only kingdom which has no members with a cell wall. We believe, there, uh, in the course of, developing, uh, of development of life on Earth, the animals probably evolved from a heterotrophic protist-like or animal-like protist ancestor. Um, what that looks like, what that looked like, and when it happened exactly is difficult to determine at this time. But that's the, what is indicated by the the, the uh, fossil record and the DNA record.